Welcome back to the second episode of the Star Wars Battlefront Clone Trooper Challenge. If you haven't seen the first episode, I highly recommend doing that so you can fully understand the concept and rules of the challenge. The basic rules are as follows. Vehicles can only be used for strategic purposes, not just killing enemies. All classes must be used exactly three times. The maps must be played in chronological order, all of which must be done without dying. Since we're playing the maps in chronological order, our next two maps will be on the planet of Bespin. Now, there isn't too much information about Bespin during the Clone Wars, aside from what I could find on Wikipedia. Despite Bespin's neutral stance during the Clone Wars, the CIS launched an invasion of the planet, and Bespin quickly fell to the Separatists. Based on that, we can really only speculate how a battle for a planet like Bespin would have played out. I imagine the CIS probably would have crippled the Republic Space Forces before launching a full-out assault on Cloud City and the surrounding platforms. Any remaining Republic forces would have to defend against Vulture droids, bombers, and gunships in the air, while simultaneously protecting the government on the mining colony itself. Based on that, I don't think it really matters which Bespin map we start with, so let's start with possibly the best map in all of Star Wars Battlefront, Bespin Cloud City. Bespin Cloud City is an infantry-only map that is a sniper's paradise. The south and east portions of this map are dominated by a series of narrow elevated walkways that connect three command posts. The rear flank, the walkway, and the forward flank. Directly below the walkways is a huge open area called the courtyard that has multiple blaster turret emplacements and a fountain in the center. On the north part of the map is the rear entrance, which leads directly through some very familiar looking catwalks to the carbon freezing chamber. The Republic starts out with the rear entrance and flank, while the CIS starts out with the walkway and the forward flank. Both the carbon freezing chamber and courtyard remain neutral at the start. This is one of the most balanced, engaging maps in the game and is easily one of my favorites. Before I dive into the strategy, let's take a step back and look at all five classes on the Republic roster since I forgot to introduce them in the first video. First up is the regular clone trooper. He's armed with a DC-15A rifle, EMP grenades, concussion grenades, and a blaster pistol. Overall, this is one of the best rounded units in the game. The accuracy and rate of fire of the rifle is superior to the Super Battle Droid. While he doesn't get the benefits of wrist rockets, the EMPs have great splash damage. He can also take a beating, with only the ARC Trooper having more overall health. This is a solid choice for any map. Next is the ARC Trooper, who is armed with a Plex Missile Launcher, a Blaster Pistol, Thermal Detonators, and Mines. The Rocket Launcher doesn't have great splash damage, but will one-shot any unit it hits directly. The Mines are also insanely effective against enemy AI, who often don't see them. While he has the most health out of all the classes, and looks the coolest, he's also the slowest, which coupled with his anti-tank weapons makes fighting against infantry a challenge. Next we have the Clone Pilot, who's armed with a DN Boltcaster, Blaster Pistol, a Fusion Cutter Repair Tool, and the Health and Ammo Dispenser. He has an auto repair function that is very useful on vehicle maps, which we put to great use in the first episode. Next up is the Clone Sharpshooter, who's armed with a DC-15X Sniper Rifle, a Blaster Pistol, Thermal Deaths, and a Recon Droid. This class is absolutely insane against infantry. The sniper has barely any recoil, no bullet drop, and is a guaranteed two shot on all troops except the droidica, who could take three. While he has less health than the rest of the troops, he's able to move faster, which can really help once you are spotted by the enemy. The recon droid with its orbital strike function is also one of the most useful tools in the game, and can quickly turn the tide on a map if it's deployed at a crucial choke point. Finally, we have the jet trooper, who's armed with an EMP launcher, a commando pistol, and thermal deaths. This class is one of the best in the game. The EMP launcher is a one hit against all units aside from the droidica, and the commando pistol has a crazy rate of fire that is just as useful against infantry. Coupled with the jetpack and no fall damage, this class is a force to be reckoned with on any close quarters map. His only downfalls are the low ammo count for the launcher, and his overall health is lower than average. Based on the layout of this map, I immediately ruled out the ARC Trooper and Clone Pilot since there are no vehicles to drive or destroy. I also ruled out the Jet Trooper, not because I thought he wouldn't be a good fit for this map, but there were other maps in the challenge I thought he would be better for, such as Moss Eisley, so I didn't want to waste one of my valuable three Jet Trooper lives if I didn't have to. That left me to choose between the regular Clone Trooper and the Sharpshooter. I decided to go with the Reg because of the extra health, and there aren't any crazy choke points I could use the Orbital Strike on with the Sharpshooter, which I knew would be very useful for some of the future maps. My strategy for this map is quite simple. Control the walkways, control the map. This map is one of the most popular to play on when the multiplayer community was still active, and time and time again the deciding factor was who controlled the walkways. 
Once all three are taken, it is incredibly difficult to fight up the stairs by the forward flank or the rear entrance, and the walkways allow troops to pour covering fire onto the courtyard below, making it very easy to take and start the ticket bleeding. Additionally, the AI will push toward the walkway command post by nature, which makes it a little easier to take these command posts. Another pro of this strategy is that a bulk of the CIS will spawn at the forward flank and head for the courtyard, which makes it somewhat easier to take the first walkway. I learned very quickly that you want to get an early jump on the troops that spawn at the walkway, so I spawned as fast as I could and started pouring fire onto the clinkers that spawned. Luckily only two droidicas spawn this way, and both didn't spot me before I was able to kill them. I used a lot of ammo to take the CP, but there were two ammo packs I was able to pick up to resupply. As I focused on taking the CP, the CIS took the courtyard below, and our forces on the other side of the map took the carbon freezing chamber. One of the downfalls of the walkway strategy is that the ammo droids are in very inconvenient locations. A lot of times you run out of ammo before you can even get to them. The forward flank can get really difficult to take since the AI will spawn directly on it, which halts the flag taking process. I was able to take out this droidica before it could deploy its shield, which definitely saved this attempt. At this point, we have all the command posts except for the courtyard, which had me thinking that this would be over really soon. Unfortunately, while I was taking the forward flank, a group of droids ascended the staircase behind the flank and retook the walkway command post. I still had an advantage, so I wasn't too concerned. Then, the SEPs took the carbon freezing chamber, and I started to get worried. The chamber is a real grind to fight in, and if you are trying to get through the map without dying, it's not the wisest choice to go running in there. I decided to head back to the walkway where I could at least get the ticket bleeding started again. A squad of droids tried going to the rear flank, but I was able to make quick work of them with the DC-15.
captured a command post. I was starting to feel hopeful again, and then the droids took the rear entrance. I was hoping they wouldn't get this one since it was on the other side of the map, but I knew I would have to take it back in order to keep the bleeding going. I didn't want to risk going down into the courtyard and getting picked off by a sniper, especially when we were up by so many tickets. Enemy forces have captured a command post. I made good use of the EMP grenades here, throwing them down both sets of stairs onto droids trying to climb them. Things got pretty intense, and while I was fighting off the droids, the Seps managed to take back the walkway and the forward flank, so now the Republic was bleeding tickets at a really fast rate. I had to get the rear entrance back ASAP to stop the bleeding, so I took a risk and ran down the stairs. Luckily there weren't too many droids, so I was able to take it quickly. I tried going down into the freezing chamber to get it even again, but I had to go back and defend the CP I just took. At this point, the tickets were so low that I now decided to hunt down the remaining droids instead of taking the CPs.
I was slightly disappointed with how close this battle ended up being, especially considering the success I had early on. I totally underestimated the Sep's flanking ability, and without the 60 plus kills I got, the battle definitely would have been lost. If I were to play this map again, I probably would have tried using the Jet Trooper to bounce between command posts to keep the ticket bleeding to a minimum. Next up for the challenge is Bestman Platforms, which has some pretty crazy mechanics that I can't wait to share with you. If you like this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.